right, boys. So after year three, Coach Jay Cutler is sitting at 38 and three, four and two, four and two against rivals, 14 and one against the top 25. Job security safe, and we're three and zero oh in our bowl games. We won the All State Circle Bowl and the SEC Championship year one, surprisingly. Year two, we did not make the SEC Championship, and we won the Capital One Bowl. Year three, of course, we won the BCS National Title as well as the SEC Championship with a 14-0 season. Now, we got some coaching movement as far as our squad. Our offensive coordinator, Jay Hobson, is going to move on to become West Virginia's next head coach. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, definitely happy for him. Uh, West Virginia's prior coach, Brown, was fired after they won like four games last season. So, shout out to Jay Hobson. He's taking over a team that's probably not that good on paper. You see there were five and seven back-to-back -back years. We wish him nothing but the best, but if possible, best believe we're going to put West Virginia on our schedule. Moving on to players leaving. Titan Hudson Henry thinks he's ready to move on to the draft as a redshirt sophomore. We can get you very, very, very much closer to, you know, to the first round if you come back for one or two years. So it says his persuasion chance is very high. Promise he won't regret getting his uh his um diploma. Easy promise. He's going to stay. Let's go. Quarterback freshman Owen Jones pretty much realizes he's not going to be get playing time at quarterback until you know Kelvin Franklin leaves. But if Kelvin Franklin stays all four years, he's right behind him. He won't get a chance to stay. So we're not even going to try to persuade him to stay. He's going to move on to Army. Shout out to him. You know, we wish Owen Jones nothing but the best. Demetri Moore, you know what I mean? He led the nation in tackles all three seasons here that we were here with um with uh, Vanderbilt. First season, he won the Ben Narek and the best linebacker award. And it's crazy he never won it again because each season, his tackle numbers just went up and up and up. They went up six from year one to year two, and then they went up 14 from year one to year three. Uh, tackles for loss were around the same, 14, 15, 15. Um, no sacks in his final year. He had four in his first, no picks his last year, no touchdowns, three pass deflections, one forced fumble, one recovery. So, you know, I guess he didn't do some of the things uh, other players did, but you know what I mean? I uh, look forward to seeing him in the first, in the fourth round. And then we got, uh, senior CJ Bowler, who was not projected to go until the sixth round. I call BS on that. You know what I'm saying? His first two years were decent. You know what I mean? He did what he had to do. Three and five touchdowns. But his final year, he ends with 20 touch receiving touchdowns. 73 catches, 1,600 yards, 117 yards a game. You know what I mean? It is what it is. I think he'll be a steal if somebody waits to the sixth round to pick him up. We're also saying goodbye to Harrison Smith, Jonathan Stewart, Rucker Breitmeyer, who I feel like can be, be an undrafted free agent. Uh, Michael Wusu, I think he might have earned himself a, you know, a spot in the league with the season he had his senior year. Samson say Brown, he could at least be a return man or something. But, you know, if not, kudos to him if he moves on. You see his receiving numbers here, you know, for the second year. But in his first year at the program, look at his rushing numbers. He almost ran for 1,000, 21 touchdowns on the ground. He definitely should get a spot in the league, at least as a return man. Haney's gone. Let's see who else we got going. Um, Allen George, Colin Anderson. Colin Anderson played great. His last year – you know, was leaps and bounds over his first year. Eight sacks, 27 tackles for loss, 73 tackles. You know what I mean? No picks his last two years, no touchdowns, had a few deflections, had a forced fumble, also caused a safety. I feel like he should make a team. Allen George wasn't much of a turnover guy. Four, three, and three. Tackles were pretty good, but good pass deflections. I mean, you know, he did get beat and exposed a lot this last year as well. Um, and then that's pretty much all the notables leaving the program. Taking a look at the pro draft results, Dimitri Moore and CJ Bowler both do get drafted fourth and sixth round, respectfully. All right, guys, this is where we really have to make things shape here in offseason recruiting. We got a lead over Clemson with Mike Higgins. We're behind on Penn State with Eric Coley, and we got a lead over Toledo with Eric Mangum. Now, Mike Higgins. We need him to come to the squad, right? We're giving him at least 8,000 points, at least. Then that leaves us 7,000 between Coley and Mangum. All right, guys, so this is what it's going to look like for us. 
Mike Higgins gets 8,000. Eric Coley gets 3,500. And Mangum gets 3,500 as well. Dante Smith is returning as our running back, so we definitely aren't hard-pressed to get Coley. But he definitely has, you know what I'm saying, the skill set that will, you know, be a plus here in Nashville. All right, boys, the results are in. We are able to sign all three recruits. Okay, that is most definitely needed, man. So we got a top five dra uh, draft class. We got a top five recruiting class. We got a five-star, four-star, top ten prospect. Let's go. So here we are. They said we had a top five recruiting class. We literally have recruiting class number five. We edged Clemson, even though they did steal one of our uh, one of our guys that we were going after. Actually, a couple of our guys, if I'm not mistaken. But looks like we do get the last laugh. I think it was cornerback Hodges. I don't remember. Hilmer Powers. Texas A&M has the top class at two, nine, and seven. Five star, four star, three star. Georgia gets the class number two. Without a five star, Wisconsin gets one five star. They had a top three recruiting class with only a three and nine record. Miami has number four, and then of course, like I said, we have number five. Taking a look at our recruits, we got B. Charles, the wide receiver, five star, five star athlete Jay Carter, five star athlete Higgins, four star athlete Brooks, four star corner uh, Richardson, Leslie, the strong safety D tackle. Now you guys know what's up at this part of the video. I'm looking for you guys to replace every single one of these recruits, all 16 of them. Let me go ahead and screenshot it now. You guys know what you got to do. Leave your info in the comment section below. I need first name. I need last name. I need skin color. I need desired number. And then, you know what I'm saying? I will randomly select people to become these players on the squad. Now, now the only way you can become exactly who you want is if you're a Heisman sponsor. Link down in the description below if you want, want to become a sponsor. There's a video that details everything you get with each tier of sponsorship. And if you are, you know, a JV sponsor or above, you do get priority over everybody else that looks to become one of the recruits. So remember, we have... Also, if you guys are a sponsor and you already have a player, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we, we at least got to wait till your, your current player is off of the team. You know what I'm saying? So one more time. First name, last name, skin color, desired jersey number. Leave that info down in the bottom and down in the link below. Also, like we did uh, last season, if you guys want to leave a backstory to help you get selected, you know what I'm saying? Leave your backstory. If your backstory is pretty intriguing, then you know you might get the edge over somebody else. And it's always pretty cool to see what you guys come up with. All right, boys, so here we are at position changes. We have three athletes that we signed. Mike Higgins is the five-star, 88 speed, 94 excel. Let's see, 92 carry, 80 catch rating. It's only a 68 catch in traffic, 76 spec catch. Route runners are 85, jumpers are 78. So for all intents and purposes, this dude could be a, a receiver, but he could also be a DB. Play rec 80, pursuit 75, 74 man coverage, 78 zone coverage, presses are absolutely garbage. Maybe he's a safety. 80 release. So first, he's a 78 running back, 81 receiver. Eh, not that great of a DB. So 81 receiver is probably going to be what he is. All right, we, we can live with that. Next, we got Justin Brooks, 93 speed, only 83 excel, 76 overall quarterback, 79 running back, 78 uh, receiver, 79 free safety, 77 corner. Now, we did lose some people to the secondary. Let's see here. Brandon Harris was our starter last year at strong safety. Silas Soul is uh, really who's next in line for that strong safety position. Free safety. Oh, no, Brandon Harris is still here. Wow. So, Brandon Harris is going to start at strong safety still or and or. Sean Taylor is going to be in the starting lineup. So, we got some, we got some ballers in the secondary, man. 77 uh, corner, which is add to the talent we have at the cornerback position already. Brooks, 79 free safety, 70, 93 speed, 5'10", 191. For right now, we'll put him at free safety. No, we'll put him at corner. And then last but not least, Jason Carter, 97 speed, 92 excel. He's probably a wide receiver, 81 wide receiver, 77 free safety, 76 strong safety, 73 corner. 
97 speed. He's probably going to see the field this year, too. So we go to our receivers. Oh, wow. Carter is our third best receiver, and so is Mike Higgins. Now, Harrison, Bodie, and uh, John Rodriguez are all going to train this offseason. But off rip, this 97 speed is probably going to have Jason Carter on my field. Just absolutely straight up, probably in the slot. Not going to be that great at catching. I really don't don't care what it says. He's going to be on the field. Mike Higgins probably is going to be on the field as well. And John Rodriguez will be between a three and fourth receiver. Tight ends were still money over there, man. Look at look at, look at the tight end talent. Except for this one bust we signed. It was too late when we found out he was a bust. So you know it is what it is. But like we got we got hella talent here. We got two two seniors leaving. Tupin is uh, coming up. We already know who our quarterback is. We didn't recruit any quarterbacks, and we lost a quarterback at Owen Wilson. Uh, Owen Jones, excuse me. But Kelvin Franklin, you know what I mean? He's the guy. Our offensive line still needs major work. 76 left tackle, 81 uh, left guard, 85 center, 75 right guard. Let's see if this center can play anywhere else. He becomes a 76 guard. He will train. 81 guard. We're good there. Right guard. So we'll go ahead and make Cole. Oh, true freshman. He won't train. That's bad. So he'll, he'll just stay at center because Dan Dawkins is a senior. This O-line, man, we have to recruit O-linemen this year, bro. We just have to. Zach Williams is back for his uh, rest junior year. We don't have any right ends. We only have 3D tackles. We don't have an abundance of middle linebackers. We don't have an abundance of linebackers, period. Jeez, oh, man. We could probably put Sean Taylor Jr. at linebacker. That would be insane if we put him at linebacker for real, for real. Because now you're Raya Rice with Dimitri Moore gone. He is the sole main middle linebacker. Our left outside linebackers and right outside linebackers aren't that strong. Vincent LSR, maybe we can move him to the other side because these guys are going to train. But we move on these safeties, they'll train as well. So I like possibly, what was that one receiver that could have been a DB? So right here we got our best corner on the team, Trey Douglas, would be a beastly linebacker. 85 overall left outside linebacker. I'm going to move Trey Douglas over there. You know what I'm saying? Mancini. Messina, rather, we'll move you to the right side. We still need a good middle linebacker. What other corners can play middle linebacker? Jalen Mahoney can play middle linebacker. Jason Harris, he's not moving from corner. This dude's a beast. You know what? Brendan Harris, we're going to move you down in the box a little bit, the middle linebacker. Apparently, he would be a beast tackle. So, Brendan Harris, we can let some of the younger guys step up in a position they'll play next year. We'll move Brendan Harris to middle linebacker. He's at 81. Matter of fact, let's move on to right outside linebacker right quick since he has more speed. And we can move Messina to middle inside linebacker. You know what I'm saying? That's good. Him or Uriah could be right there up in the middle. Trey Douglas could play left outside linebacker. Brendan Harris could play right outside linebacker. Two DBs in their senior years are moving to linebacker because that's what we need. But we went heavy recruiting. In the, uh, line, in, the, in the cornerback position, so that actually works out in our favor. So Soul is probably going to start at, at, at one of these safety positions along with uh, Sean Taylor. All right, that's going to be the position changes right there. Yes, keep my changes. Now let's move on to training after we changed all these positions. Training results, what we've all been waiting for. Hudson Henry goes up to a 95 overall, bro. That's crazy. So Kelvin Franklin Jr. goes up plus five. He's at 89, 76 speed, 83 excel, 97 throw power, plus four to the throw accuracy. I like it, I like it, I like it. Got to repeat all those awards. Javion Marlowe is our best running back, but at only 82 speed, he's not going to be our guy. It's going to be Dante Smith and Josh Clark. You know what I mean? Both those guys get plus five. Marlowe, man, I should have moved you to fullback, but Baps is still here, surprisingly. Oh, this is going to be his fourth year, and he's finally a senior. So he was a true freshman for us. Wide receivers, Cam Johnson only gets plus three. You know what I'm saying? He's an 87 overall, gets plus one speed, 99 excel still. That's why he his burst is so crazy. Plus three to catching. That's why he dropped so many passes. Spec catch goes up plus three. He's already good. You know what I mean? It was good at 74. Catching traffic is up. Route running goes up three. 
Um, Harrison, plus five to catching. 85 catch, 78 spec catch, 82 in traffic. John Rodriguez doesn't really go up that much. Branch does his, does a little number. But like I said, those two guys that came in are more than likely. Oh, there, there goes Jaden uh, Harrison's problem. He's a 79 speed. 98 Excel, but 79 speed. Tight ends, Hudson Henry, like I said, went up plus six. Our other tight ends go up a lot as well. Left tackle, Fitzgerald goes up plus one. Plus, uh, plus five and six to our two left guards. Dawkins goes up plus six, 91. Plus four and five to our right guards. Plus five to our uh, right tackle. Let's see what their block, what their blocking numbers is, are. Because um, that's the difference. Pass block and run block, 70, 80 and 79. Ew. 82 and 85 pass and run block, not too bad. 90 pass block, 88 run block for our center, Dan Dawkins. 88 and 88 running pass block for Julian Hernandez. So y'all should be doing a little bit better, man. 83, 83 for our left tackle. Now, defensively, Zach Williams gets a plus five. He's now a 90 overall. I expect big numbers out of him. The difference with Adi Yangbo, when he came back after getting his 13 sacks, he did absolutely jack spit the next season, sack-wise. Malik Mangum goes up plus four. I like it. Davion Green goes up plus six. He had a great breakout season, actually, in my opinion. 29 tackles, 15 for loss, seven sacks at the D tackle position. Tackle goes up two. Hit power goes up four. Power move four. Finesse move five. Block shed three. That's can still use some work at 316. Left outside linebacker, Trey Douglas, plus five, 87 overall. And he gets plus two to speed, plus two to acceleration. What's the tackle in that? Plus 373, but it doesn't matter. He's going to get to the ball from Griffin, Georgia. That's, hey, that's actually where I live at. <laughs> Uriah Rice, plus four. The, the true junior is a is a 90 overall. Messina goes up plus five. He's an 87. You know what I mean? Messina also has 97 Excel, bro. I like it. I like it. Tackling, 88, 82. Hit power, 99 for Messina. So you got to force some fumbles there, kid. Brendan Harris, plus four. 87 overall right outside linebacker. You know what I mean? 85 speed, 98 Excel. You know, he's a good tackler for somebody that was a DB. 95, I mean, plus 5 to 94 hit power. Power and finesse moves are pretty good. Block shedding to 84. So, you know what I mean? It looks like he might have put some weight on as well. Our corners, these are all the ones that train. Jalen Mahoney, Jason Harris, who I expect big things out of. He's probably going to be our number one guy. We got Chris Beasley and uh, Aiden King. Let's go. Jason Harris, plus 6 to 88. Sean Taylor Jr., Plus 5 to 85. It doesn't matter. He's going to be in the lineup regardless. Love the season. Yeah, 62 tackles, 9 for loss, 5 assisted, 1 sack, 3 picks, 3 pass deflections, 2 forced fumbles, a recovery. And then strong safety. Worship goes up plus 5. And Stole, I kept calling him Soul. Stole goes up plus 5 as well. Jalen Renfro, our kicker, goes up plus 5. Kick power, whoa, plus 5. Plus 5 to accuracy. And our punter's a true freshman, so he doesn't train. So I like... The way the boys trained this offseason, man. Now to one of the hardest parts as a coach. Oh, actually, it's not going to be hard at all. We are under the roster size at 67, so we will not have to cut anybody at all. All right, boys, so we're coming to the preseason ranked number 10 in the nation. Not bad, you know, considering that we lost a lot of starters, but we got a quarterback who threw for 70 touchdowns still in the squad, so, you know, it is what it is. Now it's time to redshirt some players. We ended up having to bring a walk-on quarterback, Nelson Patton, in. You know what I mean? Uh, I guess we'll just go ahead and redshirt you. You're not going to ever play here. Running back, Coley. I forgot we brought in Coley. We're going to redshirt Coley because you're not going to see the field this year. Fullbacks were good. Wide receivers, Charles, Brad Charles. We'll go ahead and redshirt you. Not going to redshirt any of the receivers. I expect Higgins, Carter, and uh, Rodriguez to all be in the starting lineup. I mean, you, the first four wide receivers this year. Tight ends, we'll go ahead and redshirt Glenn Allen. Left tackle, Jake uh, Ger Gerard Lamb could get redshirted. Drew Cole will get redshirted. And then uh, Corey Jones will get redshirted. Defensive side of the ball, oh, we had to bring in another walk-on. Reynaldo Nobles. Um... We'll redshirt Tillman and Allen. Linebacker position, nobody, nobody, nobody. Bolin played last year, I believe, so we didn't have to redshirt him, but he'll probably still get some burn this season as well, though. So 
We'll go ahead and leave him there. We're going to go ahead and redshirt Kevin Manning, Marquis Lee, and Mark Richardson. Yeah. These other freshmen could stay here. They'll probably find the field one way or another. Nobody at the safety positions. Okay. Luke Leslie. Of course, you know, all these guys' names are going to change because, you know, we're going to have you guys as recruits. And that's going to do it for everybody there. Now that we picked out the red shirts, let's go ahead and set up the, uh, you know what I mean? The, uh, the death chart, confirm the reset. Now you already know Dante Smith is the starter. Clark is the, uh, the guy, the guy to spell him. Fullbacks, same old, same old bats. That's their territory. Wide receiver position. Now Harrison, as much as you can catch and all that dog, 79 speed is not going to cut it on my squad. We're going to go ahead and make, do I make Mike Higgins or do I make John Rodriguez, my two receiver? Higgins, 80 catch, got, got Rodriguez. Spec catch goes to Higgins. Catching traffic goes to Rodriguez. Route running goes to Higgins. Jumping goes to Rodriguez. <clears throat> so Higgins will go ahead and be my two guy. Three, third receiver is going to go to our fast guy, our new slot guy. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Jason Carter. And then once again... John Rodriguez is going to be our fourth guy. As a true freshman, John Rodriguez was a slot man. But now, you know, last season and this season, he's going to be reverted to the fourth receiver. But we air the ball out so much that he constantly has, you know, opportunities, you know what I'm saying, to get the ball. Like, that's that's the good thing about our offense. Tight ends is going to stay. Oh, wow. Brashan, Brashanahan actually is going to jump showing wall at this tight end position this year. Possibly. Let's see. Sean Wall did all right, but Brashanahan, 6'4", 254. You know what? It's really going to come down to who blocks better because you run sets with both tight ends. And Brashanahan blocks better. Slightly. It's, oh, it's really close. It's not even like that. So, you know, but, you know, all three tight ends will get a chance to play. Zach Williams, that's easily his position. Malik Langham, that's his position as well. D tackle, Davion uh, Davis and Derek Green. Trey Douglas starting at linebacker. Rice and Messina starting at middle linebacker. Brendan Harris starting at right. Now, Harris, we're going to make the number one. Uh, we're going to make him the number one uh, corner. Let's look at some of these other corners. Man coverage, zone coverage. We'll go ahead and leave Mahoney and Beasley in there. I want to move Brooks up. Just because he has his speed, he's faster than the other guys. Mahoney can cover, but <clears throat> he's only at 84 speed, man. It's going to get him burned a lot. But he's got, what's his press? Because he's got good coverage, man. His press is a 91. All right, so he can stay there. Beasley rocking out right now as our slot man, as our nickel guy. 93 man, 86 zone. Yeah, that's him. That's going to be him. And Aiden King, let me just stay here while we're here. Decent coverage as well. Okay. Maybe I should go ahead and register some of the other corners, but you never know. In case we got to bench somebody. So we'll leave them. We'll leave them going. Jace Justin Harris is supposed to start at free safety. Sean Taylor was our, I believe he was our strong safety last year. No, he was our free safety. So Sean is going to start at free safety over Justin Harris. 91 speed. He's got to get the nod there. Worship, 80 speed. So Stowell is going to start over Worship over there as well. 88 speed takes the cake for sure. All right, guys. You know what? We actually changed our minds. We're going to go with the speed at the cornerback position. So we're going to go with true freshman Brian Hill and true freshman Justin Brooks. We got 95 speed and 96 speed on the outside. Then we got 93 speed in the slot. It doesn't get much better than that. Now, of course, on paper, their coverage isn't like that compared to Mahoney and them boys. But I just like this. Like the speed will be able to make up for lack of technique in, a, in, in you know, in a way. And plus, you know, these guys are going to be subscriber recruits. So we'll have all top four corners as subscriber recruits. And that's the guys I want on the field. Honestly, I want you guys on the field, not computer AI players. Now that we got redshirted players in a death chart out the way, do what we normally do. We're going to go ahead and regenerate the schedule randomly. Use known games. I'm going to say no. Go ahead and regenerate. And remember the one, you know, we always, um, you know what I'm saying? Randomize it. But we're going to try to make it tough as well. But remember, 
We do want West Virginia on our schedule. Only a B plus schedule ain't it for the uh, uh, reigning champions. Is West Virginia available? Not week one. We gotta welcome our new coach to our our, our old offensive coordinator to the head coaching rank. So we'll get them week three. I want a rank squad. Wyoming comes in rank. Virginia Tech, USC, Texas. Number one, Texas. We'll go ahead and put number one Texas on the board. We'll do that on the road too. We won't even do that at home. You know what I'm saying? We we want to make because you know sometimes when you when you when you randomize it, it doesn't make it that difficult. I want this I want this schedule to be difficult. We got TCU on here. Maybe they'll be ranked. It's either them or Fresno State. Fresno State won a bowl game last year, and then it's either UCLA. We can replace them with Clemson. Man, oh man, do we want to play Clemson or do we want to possibly play them in a national championship game? That's a rough game right before the conference championship game. You know, saying you know saying that we'll make it to the conference championship game. I'll go to TCU, but I just want I want because it's hard to know TCU is going to be ranked still or Fresno State is going to be ranked still. When it comes to those guys, and we're already at an A-plus schedule. You know what I'm saying? So, we'll leave it like this. So, we got number one, Texas. Then West Virginia. Then Ole Miss, Mizzou, Mississippi State, Florida, Georgia, by South Carolina, Kentucky, our rival Tennessee, TCU, and then UCLA. A-plus schedule. Now it's that time to uh, fill up our prospect list. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what our team needs are coming into this season. I say offensive line. It says we need a center and we need middle linebackers. What I'm going to focus on heavy, we do need to bring in another quarterback. As I pass quarterback there, we got to bring in another quarterback. So we're just going to go after one that's really, really interested in us. We just for depth purposes, we got a three star from Loudon, Tennessee, one from Iowa, Michigan, and one from Cali that are interested. We can use a running back, especially when a five-star is interested in the squad. Wide receiver, I feel like we're pretty set. But I see 438 speed. Can't pass up on that. Cornerback, we should be good. 436 speed. 434 speed. Middle linebacker. Is bringing the guys, even if you know me. Why, uh, I bring in a free safety, strong safety. At least not bring them in. I put them on the list. But like I said, where I want the most help, linemen, all offensive linemen, dog. Tackles, guards. Go ahead and add you guys to the list. And I usually don't do over twenty. I usually only do. 20, but we're going to do 21 or 22 because we need to bring in, we need centers, even though we can convert one to center, but we need offensive line help. Those are the top targets for me coming into this season. So we're going to go ahead and rearrange our recruiting board. Yeah, we got some other guys that want to come in possibly. Who is this quarterback on my list, dog? Hold on. Who is Buddy? The number 56 quarterback from Loudoun, Tennessee, Brian Temple. Nah, we're going, we're going to get you out of there. And we're gonna get Bo Smith out of there. We're gonna get you two off the list. That way, you know what I'm saying? We can we can keep it at our normal 20. But Brian Temple, I'm not even gonna really waste my time looking for a gym maybe later on. And then Bo Smith. We'll get you off of there as well. But we're gonna rearrange this list to where linemen are the priority. So I forgot how to uh Forgot how to uh, rearrange the board. Oh, yeah. Our, uh, right trigger. All of our linemen are going to the top of the list. That is the priority this season, bro. Office and linemen are the priority. Death purposes, starting immediately purposes, it don't matter. You name it, we need you guys on the squad. You guys are the top priorities. All right, here we go. Let's start to um start the scout. Devin Griffin. Decent. 86 pass block, 80 run block. Alvin Douglas, dope, 84, 84, 85 impact block. Willie Hancock, 76, okay. Mike Brown, eh, 79, not bad. John James, we're still going to bring you in. <laughs> we need you. Scott Turner, decent, decent. Nick Goddard, eh. 
Tyler Hunter. Eh, no gems. Moving on to quarterback Zach Carter. Not worth our time. Andy Neal. Decent, decent. Dominique Caps. He's okay. David ba- David Baker. Nah, don't need you. Ty Bryant, cornerback. I like it. I like it. Mario Johnson, cornerback. I like it. Jeff Johnson, middle linebacker, depth purposes. Harold uh, Holloway, decent. Jerry Berry, not that good. Antoine Rucker, okay. Patrick Jones, decent. And then we got we got Kyle Smith. He goes up plus three. Okay, no crazy gems or anything like that, but you know what I mean? Some 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 guys we could work with. Because you know, for the most part, our skill positions were set. So we got all of those things out of the way, and I think we're ready to start next season. All right, so coming into next season, we have eight preseason all Americans, nine preseason all conf. Starting off the season with a bye week, of course. Take a look at the uh, preseason polls. Texas is number one. Auburn is number two. Clemson is number three. Tennessee, Miami, um, Oregon, Oklahoma, Fresno State, Notre Dame, us. We're B plus, A minus, A minus, D plus special teams. Jeez. Michigan, Alabama, Arizona, Iowa State, Virginia Tech, Florida, TCU, Georgia, USC, Washington, Oregon State, Buffalo, LSU, Wyoming, and Nebraska. Conference outlook, we're expected to finish second behind uh, Tennessee in the East and third behind Auburn and Tennessee in the SEC as a whole. Heisman watch list, Kelvin Franklin leads the way, of course, followed by Fresno State's quarterback, Buffalo's quarterback, Harold Joyner from Auburn, and Cameron Davis from uh, UW. Preseason All-Americans, of course, Kelvin Franklin, the reigning Heisman winner. Cam Johnson, expect a big season out of him. Zach Williams, Davion Davis, Jason Harris, Sean Taylor Jr., second team, Hudson Henry, Brendan Harris, preseason All-SEC, Franklin, Johnson, Williams, Davis, Harris, Harris, Taylor Jr., second team, Hudson Henry, Trey Douglas, and that's it. And if you guys noticed the Second team all conference quarterback is Alan Walter. So Alan Walter stayed for his rest of his senior year, ninety nine overall. As he looks to battle, I mean, he looks to get revenge against us this year. But only this year, he's coming in back. He's coming back to Nashville. Championship contenders outlook: they got us at ten this year, seven for the following year, ten for two thousand eighteen, and top five for two thousand nineteen. As far as toughest places to play, they have us on the list at seventeen. We're on a six game win streak at home. Average attendance is 40 and a half thousand. I believe that might be the uh, capacity of our stadium. We're going to get some recruiting out the way here. We do have auto um, insta commit. So we're going to try with Alvin Douglas. He doesn't commit. Willie Hancock doesn't commit. Uh, Who else we got here? Scott Turner doesn't commit. Nick Goddard doesn't commit. Tyler Hunter doesn't commit. Andy Neal won't get it. Dominique Caps insta commit. We get the five-star number one running back in the nation, Dominique Caps. You know, he's a lot slower than we usually want, but, you know what I mean, I'll use the depth at this position. Ty Bryant, can we get him to commit? We don't. Mario Johnson, no. Jeff Tom- Jeff Johnson, no. Harold Holloway, another instant commit, number seven middle linebacker. Who else we got? Patrick Jones, we don't get him to commit. Kyle Smith, we're not in the lead yet, so we do get two Insta commits. We don't have to uh, use those points on those guys. As far as Devin Griffin, you know what I mean? We're going to give all these. We want these guys to get all the points. We want to go after all the linemen. How many points we got left? All right, of course, we're going to have to We're going to scale it down a little bit. The two tackles we want. The two guards we want. The centers, I feel like we don't have to go as hard after because they're centers, and we could move some people around. So we'll put 250 on these guys. For right now, especially his three star. I'm not going that hard after a three star. Put a hundred on you. Another three star, just put a hundred on them. If people jump us, they just jump us. Any Neal quarterback. TCU. I'll give him two fifty. 
Ty Bryant, 250, Mario Johnson, 250. Of course, you know, if we have some overlap, we'll throw overlap on, on other guys, but we want to make sure we get points on everybody. We might not get Jerry Berry, especially since we just signed another, you know, Harold Holloway. You know, but it's really not a pressing matter if we don't get him. Kyle Smith, three-star strong safety. Not pressing if we get you either, sir. So we'll throw 150 on you. We got 600 points left. Let's see what we got here. Ty Bryant, we'll give you another 100. Another 100 to Mario Johnson. I want to keep, you know what I mean? I want to keep keep the pressure, you know, on, on, on secondary players. But some of these other players, you know, they're just to feel, you know what I mean, depth purposes. So, you know what I mean? We got we to gotta keep it for what it is. Another 150 on Goddard. Another 150... Uh, on Tyler Hunter, and then we'll throw 50 more on Kyle Smith. All right, so those uh those are evenly distributed. We'll go ahead and move the week, and then we're gonna we're gonna get up out of here. All right, guys. So here we are, week number two. We stay at number ten. This next week, we will be going up against the number one overall team in the nation, the Texas Longhorns. You know, what I mean, it's gonna be a tough game. You see on paper, they're way better than us. A-plus is across the board. We're B-plus, A-minus, A-minus. But we still got the best quarterback in the nation, so we should be able to come out on top. So if you guys are excited and enjoyed this season thus far, stop and smash that like button. Hit me up in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new. It's your boy, Uncle Sam's Reject, RKGames.com. I'm out of here. Peace. I want to give a special shout out to our Heisman sponsors, Isaac Johnson and AJO926. Thank <laughs> you.